Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Critique Time. This is the series where I have you guys submit your designs to me and I'll critique them, give my feedback, and then make my own versions of them. In this video, I'll be redesigning your logos. We had some really good submissions, so let's get to it. Our first logo was submitted to us by Mocha, and it's actually a restaurant slash bar type thing in Mexico called Voodoo. Apparently the restaurant is styled in a New Orleans type feel, and if you're not familiar with New Orleans, it's in Louisiana. You can look up some of their culture and get an idea for what that's like. But the part of their culture that Mocha pulled from here for this logo is their history of voodoo. Now, interestingly enough, this restaurant doesn't actually serve Cajun food like you normally find in the New Orleans area. They mainly focus on burgers, as well as pizzas with odd toppings that may be a little out of the ordinary. And Mocha said in particular that those pizza toppings were their way of having a fun, cheesy play on the word voodoo. Kind of like they're mixing all of these ingredients together in some type of strange concoction. Now, not only do they have this logo, but they also have this version as well, which they use anytime they need the logo in a horizontal format. And if that wasn't enough, they also have another version that looks like this. And in case you didn't know what this represented, this skull and top hat dude is known as the Baron Samadhi. And that's a very common symbol that you'll find in Louisiana voodoo. And it's mainly just represented by a white skull and a black top hat. So looking at all of this, my first thoughts are that it's a really cool style. And if these were illustrations, I think they'd be perfect. But for a logo, I do feel like they're a little overly complex. And looking at this main logo here, it may be even hard for people to tell what the name is because the letters are laid out in a pretty unconventional way. And on top of that, they kind of just get lost with all of this other illustration surrounding it. And I'm guessing that's one reason why they have this horizontal format because it's a lot less complicated and it's much easier to read. I think where the struggle is happening here is that they want something graphical to represent the name, which is why they've added all of these extra little illustrations on top of the letters. But adding in that extra detail is often quite hard because because it makes it to where this logo can't really be used at small sizes, which is why I think they made this icon something that could be maybe used at a smaller size and you could still tell what it is. So for this redesign, my main goal is to just combine these things into one cohesive logo that they can use anywhere. And I think I'm in agreement with Mocha by thinking this last version is probably the best out of all of these. It definitely has the most visual impact and I think it gives them the highest chance of having really good brand recognition. And once again, I think this style is really cool, but to me, it doesn't say so much restaurant bar as it does like a tattoo parlor. This seems more like a restaurant that people go to to have a good time, to try some interesting food, and this feels just almost a little too serious for that type of atmosphere. So I wanna keep the main imagery here, but I wanna simplify it down and make it a little more playful. So the first thing I wanna do is just make a simplified version of this Baron Samadhi character. And I actually think we can get a head start on that by just reusing one of these skulls on the necklace. And just grab that, rotate it, and make it a bit bigger. And honestly, I think this is a really nice, much simpler representation of at least the skull part of this icon. So in the same style, let's go ahead and add in the hat. And one thing that the Baron always had on his hat was some type of feather. And like I said earlier, we don't want them to have to have an icon logo and a word logo as separate things. So let's add the name Voodoo right underneath this new icon. And as for the font, I'd like to find something that's pretty thick and geometric. That way it matches the shapes of our icon. I think this works really well because the rounded edges of the font definitely mimic the roundedness of this top hat and the skull itself. And these letters actually look really similar to each other. So you could almost see it as like beads on some type of beaded necklace. And that kind of helps to mimic the original version that we were pulling from. Now I do like the logo at this point, And if you want something that's simple and clean, I think you could probably just stop right here. But I'd still like to make this feel a little more playful. It's a restaurant that serves really wild food in Mexico, which is a place that's usually known for being really lively and colorful. And I think a good way to do that is to make this not so perfect. We can add some texture to it, maybe even make it look like it was hand-drawn. So to do that, I'm gonna pull this over into Procreate. So the first thing I'm gonna do is just lower the opacity of this logo and trace over top of it with a brush that has a bit more texture. I shortened the hat just a little bit, that way the whole logo wouldn't be too tall. And I also didn't stick too close to the text outlines. I brought in some more variation, that way each letter would be unique. If you remember back to the original logo, there was a lot of little details that made this feel very voodoo-ish. And so I'd like to add a few things here to really help bring out that voodoo theme without going overboard. Now to me, a big part of voodoo is about control. And I think a very similar theme can be found in hypnotism. Because you know when somebody's hypnotized, you can kind of make them do whatever you want them to do. And of course the main symbol that people use to show that they're trying to hypnotize you is that swirl pattern. So I think it would be cool to add that pattern here in the eyes of our skull. I'll also add just a little bit of detail to the feather. And finally, in the original version, you'll notice that on the hat, there was a lot of markings that really helped bring out that voodoo theme. And I don't wanna overdo it with the markings, but I do think we could give it just a simple shape or something to help it bring out that same feeling. Something as simple as that. And just like I was saying before, the letters almost felt like a necklace to me. So what if we just wrapped those around the skull? 
I would like to get a little more voodoo symbolism in here though, especially on the text. And the main thing I think of when I think of voodoo is a voodoo doll. And the main things that pretty much all voodoo dolls seem to have are those little pins sticking in them and stitches where the doll has actually been stitched together. So maybe we could find a way to incorporate both of those elements into our text. I think to get the stitches in there, maybe we could just replace one of the inner parts of the O with the shape of a stitch. And maybe to get the pins in here, we can just stick one on each side of the word. And the last thing I wanna do here is add in just a bit more texture because the edges of these lines seem pretty rough, but the inner parts are just perfectly solid. And then after cleaning this up a little bit, here's what we ended up with. It's a lot more playful and colorful, and I think it matches the fun, cheesy nature of the restaurant's items a lot better, as well as just the area of Mexico. I think we were able to combine the three original logos into one single simplified version. And I still think we managed to keep a lot of the same voodoo symbolism there as well. So I wanna know what you guys think. Did we improve the logo or did we just destroy it? Let me know in the poll right here. This logo was sent in to us by Nathan, who is a graphic design student. And this is for a French bakery. Nathan had said he tried to get some imagery of the Eiffel Tower hidden in here, as well as this blue shape that's supposed to represent historical royal crests in that area. I think there's a lot of strong elements here. I definitely like the typography, and some of this imagery is really good, but I just feel like there's a little too much going on right now. So to simplify this, I'm gonna start by getting rid of the bakery. A lot of times in logos, you'll see these extra words added in to help describe what the business does, and I think more often than not, those just really aren't needed. And as for the remaining three elements, the crest, the tower, and the grain, I feel like the grain is probably the strongest element here, and it's definitely the one that ties this most to a bakery. So let's get rid of these other things and focus just on that. I'd like to simplify this icon down a bit, so let's go ahead and remove one of these sections. I think we can straighten up some of these edges too to make them a little more horizontal. And now to give this a little more visual interest, let's make it to where as we move up the grain, we have larger layers on the bottom and smaller ones towards the top. And you'll also notice that all of these layers are curved in the same direction, except for this top piece. So I think we should reshape it to where all of these curves mimic each other. And now I think we can take our new icon and just stick that on top of the text. And since the name of this business is Upper Crust, I think it's a pretty cool play on words to have the icon on the uppermost part of the logo. And in some way, you could almost see this as a crown for our text. And that helps us tie back into that royal theme that Nathan originally wanted. The last thing I would do here is adjust the colors a bit. So Nathan, these are the changes I'd recommend for the logo. This definitely is a simpler version, but a lot of the times when you have less elements, it actually helps you build a stronger brand. So once again, I wanna know what you guys think. Let me know if you like this new version or if you like the original better. Our next logo was sent in by Kevin, and this is for an American football club. Basically, the club's original logo was just this word mark here, and Kevin wanted to add an icon to that. So he designed this bulldog and showed it to his teammates, and it didn't really impress them that much. In their own words, they said it looked like a chubby kid who was mad because he couldn't get his candy. So obviously that's not a great look for a sports club. I do think though that this is actually a really solid base for an illustration of a bulldog, so hopefully we can save most of this. Because it already feels very sportsy, we just need to make it a little more aggressive. So once again, since we're gonna be doing a lot of illustration here, I'm gonna go ahead and jump into Procreate. So the first thing we can do to make this feel more aggressive is to get rid of the pupil. Doing that will make our dog feel less friendly and even less relatable. We kind of want this dog to look a little bit angry, kind of like it's ready to go out there and win the game, but right now it does just look kind of sad. And that's mainly just because of the mouth region. So I'm just gonna get rid of that so we can start with the blank canvas. And now what I'm gonna do is draw in a mouth that shows a lot more of the dog's teeth. That'll make it feel more aggressive and angry and like it's something you don't wanna mess with. And now that we've done that, we can go ahead and reshape the neck to better fit that mouth because we want this dog to feel fit and healthy because it is representing a sports club after all. And now to really accentuate the anger in the dog, I'm gonna make its eyebrows look like it's closing together a lot more and we're gonna bring those closer to the nose. If we go back and take a look at the original dog, you can see how a few tweaks in the eyes and the mouth area really make this feel a lot more aggressive and probably more appropriate for a sports club. And I think since our dog is all tough now, we need to give him some bigger spikes. And lastly, since our dog is a bit emotionally bolder, I think the outline around him should be bolder as well. So I'm definitely a lot happier with the way our icon looks now, but I do think that this text doesn't quite match it anymore mainly because we have a lot of thick lines in our dog right now, but the text just has too many thin lines. I ended up finding this text, and I think this will probably work a lot better. I would like to find a better way to incorporate the name into the dog though, so we can kind of make the entire logo somewhat of a badge. And to finish bringing these two elements together, I feel like we should give the text an outline just like we did the dog. And if you want just a plain black and white logo, I think you could stop right here, but I think this could be a little more interesting with some color. 
So for the base layer of our dog's skin, I'll just pick a beige color. And for the collar, let's go for a nice red. We really want to bring our dog to life, so I think helping it become a little more 3D would definitely do that. So let's go ahead and add in some shadows and highlights. And that pretty much wraps it up for this logo. Obviously, there's a lot of cleanup work that needs to be done, but after I do that, it'll look a little something like this. Kevin gave us a great base for the dog illustration. There's just a few areas in the face we needed to tweak to make this dog really intimidating. So Kevin, I hope you'll show this to your club and see what they think about this version. And in addition to those club members, I also wanna know what you guys think. Do you think we improved this logo? Does it meet the goals we were trying to set out to achieve? Let me know in the poll right here. I hope you really enjoyed this video and please subscribe if you haven't already. A lot of you guys watching I know haven't subscribed yet, so if you don't wanna miss anything that I post, make sure you do that. And also don't forget to ring the bell when you do. If you wanna submit your logo for a possible redesign in future episodes, you can check the description to see how to do that. Don't forget to give this video a like and let me know in the comments which one of these redesigns was your favorite. And also, if you guys enjoy this channel and you get a lot of value from it and you wanna see it grow, it would really help me out if you would share this video with people. Share it on Facebook or Twitter or any other social platform out there and let people know that you liked it and that you think they will too. If you want to see more of my videos, you can watch some of those here. Once again, thank you guys so much for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.